early start on putting in the next cartridge. Stand by one, Susan. We'll check for you. And Space Lab Huntsville for AGHF, uh, it'll probably take about 10 or 15 minutes for the furnace to complete its translation, but you have a go to proceed with that cartridge exchange as soon as it's finished moving. Okay, I understand when we see the furnace uh, zero to two, we have a go to proceed uh, to insert the next cartridge. Yeah, that's affirmative.
Okay, let me ask Susan Helms real quickly. Uh, what is it like just to live in the shuttle over a period of time? Well, actually, the best correlation I can make is with a, a camping trip where you're well prepared. Uh, we basically have a fixed amount of volume inside the space shuttle, and inside here we've got living quarters, working quarters, habitability quarters, and uh, it's home for as long as two weeks or even longer, hopefully, on this flight. And uh, we, we definitely uh, get to be a team. We work together as a team for over a year and become a family as that progresses. And when we get up here, we've got a job to do. And uh, we, we work back in the module primarily during the day on this flight. And then uh, when, or I should say during the work shift on this flight, and then when it comes time for the crew to go to sleep, we turn the front end into a, a sleeping quarters. And, and it's very much like a camping trip. We're, we're sort of in a Volkswagen bus here, locked up with the door closed for over two weeks. And uh, definitely, uh, it takes a lot of choreography and a lot of practice, but it's working extremely well. Let me ask very quickly Charles Brady about, uh, about uh, carrying the Olympic torch when he was doing his exercises the other day. Well, I didn't expect that. My, uh, my crewmates uh, handed it off to me. It really was a great honor, something that we all have, uh, take great honor and pride in the fact that Columbia has been able to carry the Olympic torch with us and also the Olympic banner that we hope to unfold here uh, on our day off. And uh, we all feel tremendous uh, honor and respect for the Olympic and international spirit. We have an international crew uh, from uh, many different countries, Spain, Italy, Canada, France, and the U.S. is represented along with the respective space agencies. So we feel like this is a, our flight is a real representation of the Olympic spirit, and it was quite an honor to be exercising with that. Well, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it, taking your time out to board your busy schedule and talking to us. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you from aboard the Space Shuttle Columbia as we orbit the Earth. microgravity space lab mission, we're going to make a very aggressive and coordinated effort to try to understand the extent of muscle atrophy and also the mechanisms behind it. And for that reason, we brought together six different teams from the United States and Europe to study this in a comprehensive fashion. To support the muscle physiology experiments, we're making use of a very sophisticated device called a torque velocity dynamometer, or a TVD. It's contributed to the mission by the European Space Agency. I sort of think of the torque velocity dynamometer as an arm wrestling or a, or a leg wrestling machine. Okay. This morning, as Jean-Jacques Fabier, my colleague, is working out here, he's using it in the leg wrestling mode. Sometimes the machine wins the wrestling match against us, and sometimes it lets us win. But who wins the wrestling match is not important. What is important is that the TVD can measure the torque or the force applied by the limb, and also the speed at which we contract our muscles and the position of the, the foot or the arm at any instant in time. And with this information, the scientists on the ground can understand how muscle performance is adapting to weightlessness. For example, they can look at the results coming out of this machine here and understand what's happening at the level of muscle fibers. There are two types of muscle fibers in our body. We have fast twitch fibers, and we have slow twitch fibers. Fast twitch fibers contract muscles very quickly, but they fatigue quite readily. Slow twitch fibers, on the other hand, contract more slowly, but they have a lot more endurance. The LMS scientists theorize that during our 17 days here in space, that our 
slow muscle fibers are going to take on properties of fast muscle fibers. That means that they'll be able to contract quicker, but they'll be more fatigable. But the muscle wasting and the loss of strength is not totally explained by the fact that changes occur at the level of muscle fibers. There must be ch other changes going on as well. And therefore, we have some investigators who are looking at changes at the hormonal level and the, the neurological level as well. For instance, we have one particular group from UCLA who are looking at the level of uh, neurological activation required to energize the, the muscles in our legs. Because of all the electrodes that we wear on our body, and because of all the blood samples and uh, muscle biopsies that are taken from us, and because of the fact that we spend a lot of time inside the TVD every day, we lightheartedly refer to ourselves as the rat crew, as in laboratory rats. However, we and the scientists on the ground fully expect that the results coming out of the muscle physiology set of experiments will go a long way to helping us understand the adaptation of muscles to weightlessness. And in the future, we're going to be able to provide countermeasures for astronauts flying on the International Space Station and on exploratory missions to the inner solar system. And we also expect that some of the results coming out from uh, the muscle physiology work will have application to uh, rehabilitation programs on Earth for spinal cord injured patients and also for a patients who suffer from muscle unloading uh, illnesses. Well, that's about it for the muscle physiology experiments. Um, I hope you now have an understanding of, of what we're doing when you see us uh, in downlink images in the torque velocity dynamometer. So long from the Space Shuttle Columbia. Talk to you tomorrow. This television uh, being seen from the Space Lab Science module showing uh, payload specialist Jean-Jacques Favier, who is working along with pilot Kevin Kriegel and payload commander Susan Helms on an in-flight maintenance procedure, which should take about an hour and a half to complete, that will uh, bring back to full operation uh, one of the key experiments in the Space Lab, that is the bubble drop facility. Uh, a power cable uh, has experienced a short circuit on board. And uh, as was mentioned uh, during the mission update program, uh, it is being restored to full health through this in-flight maintenance procedure.